Freddy started talking to me softly, almost lovingly, working my inhibitions. He was the calm of some hurricane. I was the eye, watching. I watched as he hung drills in the wall and gathered up the drill bits. I watched him take a rag, start cleaning the oil off some stuff, the mundane and earthly habits. I watched him notching spark plugs like my stepdad. He was a big man, tall and thick at the waist, hair like Don King when not in cornrows, big bones, some teeth missing, stark with dark skin. Working was both his class and religion and the facade he'd present to the rest of the world. This was how he blended in, I learned. We all had to front to survive. They would bring their busted up cars and trucks and motorcycles, anything on wheels. He could take a quick look and then get to work. He knew his way around under a hood. Sometimes they just needed to borrow some tools. Some were just friends coming to talk. Others were apprentices and associates who referred business to him in return for the same. A few were our people and many were human. Now I happened to be there in the chewy maelstrom of his life, by his side. He taught me how to live in this fucked up environment, East Oakland. How to deal with the people, which ones to avoid. The new currency was trading out what you have for what you need. And then, maybe trading up for what you want. The new time was not told by the sun. Light or no light. We lived as things happened. I would soon realize there was no other way. Chapter 7 We headed for downtown Oakland. Freddy was a man of few words. He let me control the radio dial and turn it up as loud as I wanted, which was as loud as it would go. I found some hip-hop, Drake and Lil Wayne trading mics. Music holds memories. And one song I would come to cherish, years to come, for it always recalled the fresh, bright, new eyes through which I saw the world. And my relationship with Freddie was Drake's best I ever had. The bass thumping, engine jumping, all the while rolling north up I-80, with downtown Oakland on the horizon. And Rocky Road wasn't just an ice cream anymore. Maybe it was the shocks. Or maybe I was in shock, or maybe both. But the windshield was a window to a new world, with San Francisco Bay to my left, Fruitvale and the elevated BART train on the right, an electric systemic in me. Not knowing nothing and loving every minute, because in the moment, guess what? I was okay. I was starting to feel safe. I wasn't restrained or being abused in any way. I had even been trusted not to run away when he made that quick trip to the 7-Eleven. Hell, this was all very unusual, unreal. And nobody would have believed me outside my own personal conviction, steady pushing across to anyone and everyone who cared to listen, from now until forever. I wasn't under attack. Plenty of neon orange corn puffs and Dr. Pepper to keep me satiated. Plenty of Oakland hip-hop to keep the mouth watering in the land where rap reigns supreme and love both hot and cold. Oakland was to rap heavyweights what Chicago was to blues. A remarkable collection of the best of the best of the best. So whenever I felt lost in this crazy new world, where I often found myself a clear and present minority, I could turn to Freddie or the radio dial if needed.